Joining us now, former U.S. Trade Representative, Ohio uh, Senator Rob Portman. And, uh, Senator, you probably have heard the news already this morning. What, what uh, Secretary Mnuchin said was uh, that last deal we were about 90 percent there, and I have hopes that now we can get the remaining 10 percent, which makes it sound like he's saying that the 90 percent is still on the table, and that's where I'm wondering whether that really is the story. Did, did, when the 90 percent was on the table, when China backtracked, uh, on all those different um, uh, areas that we talked about. Do we know whether that's changed? Do, do we know whether we're 90 percent there now, or had we been at 90 percent back then, and, and we may not be there now? Do you know? Joe, I think it's the first time I've heard a number around it, but in our conversations uh, with Secretary, Lighthizer, or Secretary Mnuchin and USTR Lighthizer, who are the two people really negotiating this, we had been told that they were very close, and I guess that's the 90 percent. Uh, but then that China had walked back. So you're probably right. Probably we were very close, uh, and they'd walked back some of the structural changes, probably on the subsidy side and probably on the tech, ta tech transfer side, both of which are really important to actually having a deal that makes sense for us. So, uh, look, I think we are in a situation where, at a minimum, we're going to jumpstart the talks, thanks to this meeting with President Xi and President Trump. That's a good thing. We need to be back at the table. We really haven't had serious negotiations for almost six weeks now. And second, I, I do think there is a way to move forward on this. So I think it's a positive statement, but we were probably, you know, 90 percent there, and then they walked back last time. Hopefully they'll be willing to come back to the table with a more genuine effort. So, Senator, should we hope for uh, a, a, an agreement to keep talking, or should we hope for something actually substantial to be signed, you know, where we're ready to go right now? Do you th really think it's possible that we do anything more than just sort of uh, delay f uh, more tariffs, uh, maybe even take off some of the ones we have now, but really still just agree to talk for the next six months or so? Do you think it's possible to actually arrive at a deal where some of these issues are solved? Yeah, I, I think it is possible. And I think what will happen is there will be a, a commitment to, again, start the talks again in earnest. and. There might even be some, uh, some exchange of some ideas on how to break through some of the uh, logjam that we had about six weeks ago with regard to, again, some of these structural issues that are more difficult for, for China to focus on. I think there's also a possibility that President Trump will be willing uh, with, you know, that commitment to be able to postpone some of the uh, so-called phase four or fourth tier tariffs. So we'll see. But I think it's positive news. And look, we'll see what happens on Saturday. It's coming up quickly. It is uh, coming up quickly. Wait, nothing. It's been a little bit quiet on the Iran front recently. Do you, um, you have comments on that or, 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 or where we stand right now, what you expect to happen? I guess it's a real wild card uh, at this point, isn't it? Isn't it? But it, it seems like, I don't know whether we're on the cusp of something that gets worse or something where everybody pulls back. Do you have a feeling there? Well, again, there's been a, uh, an overture by us to say, let's talk. And I think that's a positive development. Uh, you, you can't call downing the unmanned uh, aerial uh, surveillance plane a positive development. But in the aftermath of that, not to move forward with these strikes, although we did uh, apparently move forward with some things on the cyber, on the cyber front, uh, but then the overture from us to talk and the ability now to at least have a conversation is probably viewed as positive. Do you uh, have a, a feel for how the, the, this latest immigration, I'm, I'm going all, uh, to, to cover as many things as, as I can, mm -hmm. but um, what's going to happen? Will, will, the, 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 will this move, what the, the House uh, successfully moved on yesterday, will, will that move beyond the House now? Do you, how's that going to play out? Is there any room for, for the President and, uh, and Democrats actually coming to some type of, of agreement here where we do need this humanitarian aid and maybe some of it can go for security. Do you know what's going to happen there? Yeah, I think that, that's positive. I mean, the Appropriations Committee here in the Senate voted out the package 30 to 1, which, you know, rarely happens around here. Uh, then when it got to the floor, there were some concerns raised by Democrats, as you saw in the House, but it passed the House. So the humanitarian funds are, are virtually sure to go to the border. The question is whether on our side there will be an additional amendment that has to do actually with Iran uh, and the president's ability to use force rather than with regard to the border funding. So we'll see what happens there. I think that's going to be a close vote, but I think in the end we won't be pulling back the president's ability to keep on the table the possibility of a military strike should Iran uh, again take another provocative action. So that's really the issue right now. It's not so much whether the border money will get there, but whether something will be attached to it or not. So I think that will happen. 
But Joe, the bigger issue is not just the funding for the humanitarian crisis, which is real, and everyone's talking about it and everybody acknowledges it, but how do you reduce the flow? You know, how do you deal with the fact that these countries, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, continue to send people, particularly families, particularly kids, because if you have a kid, then you're subject to different rules. And, um, you know, I think there's some answers there, too, that we, we, we are getting close to, uh, to coming up with. One is to have those families actually apply for asylum, it would actually be refugee status in this case, in their home country, which is something that was done under the Obama administration. That might make a lot of sense to be able to reduce the flow and reduce some of the danger uh, that's, that's evident with regard to this long journey north. We saw uh, yesterday uh, images of a man and his daughter who had drowned in the Rio Grande. Um, I mean, they're, they're just horrible stories yeah. coming out of what, what's going on. So maybe there could be a bipartisan agreement to at least encourage people to apply, go through the process, but do so in their home countries. The, uh, when do you think election season starts? I'm wondering, have you invited people over for either night to watch? Uh, <laughs> do you have any viewing parties or anything at, in, at, at your house for the, for the debates? When do you think it starts? It's starting, isn't it? This is the beginning of, the, of election season. That, that's why I'm worried about USMCA. They ain't going to be no in infrastructure. We've got Mueller coming back, so they're going to yeah. jump all over that on July 17th. We're not getting anything done, all right, between yeah. now and, and uh, the election. Well, two, two thoughts. One, I think USMCA may be an exception because I think it makes so much sense for Democrats. It's a lot better than NAFTA in every regard if you're a Democrat. But wouldn't so, that be I mean, a win for Trump? I, I think you're... You, you've well, been it would be, but, but when you get down to the actual facts, you know, if you look at it, you know, there's, there's no enforceable labor standards in the current NAFTA, uh, right. and there are enforceable labor standards in, in, in the new USMCA as one example. So if you're a Democrat looking at that agreement, uh, you're, you're uh, on the facts at least. Uh, if you have any logic applied to this, it's likely that that will pass. But you're right. I mean, this week one of my Ohio constituents said to me, gosh, it must be really tough to get things done during an election year. And I said, yeah, actually, this is not an election year. <laughs> this is the off year. So I don't think it gets any better. I think, I think next year is going to be even crazier. But, uh, you know, we, we've got some things we have to do, right. Joe. If we don't deal with the budget issues, obviously we go into shutdown again, which is totally unacceptable. Let so we've got to figure that out. When it all is said and done, Senator, do, uh, will the Democrats run a, a more mainstream candidate or will they go with, I don't know whether you saw the moveon.org uh, number. I mean, Elizabeth Warren is like double digits ahead of the more mainstream candidates. I mean, there is a real... Uh, fervor for, for someone that, that will have, you know, I guess, outlined really progressive policy initiatives that excites the, that base of the Democratic Party. Do you think they'll be able to go with, with Biden or will they go with Elizabeth Warren, do you think? Someone like that. Um, I wouldn't be the best person to look into that crystal ball. You have to ask uh, someone who's, who's more closely aligned with uh, Democrat politics. But let me tell you this, I think there are two different Andrew? things that are working. Yeah, exactly. Andrew, where, where are you? <laughs> there are two things working against one another. One is Democrats want a candidate who can beat President Trump. They all say that's their number one priority. And second, you're right, uh, there is a leftward lurch in the Democratic Party. Uh, those two are actually contradictory, I think. All right, Senator. Uh, so you didn't answer me. Which night, which night are you more excited about? I'm more excited about tomorrow night. I'm not really sure why, although tonight, uh, they're both at 9 o'clock, so I'm not going to be able to see anything unless I, I DVR it. Um, it's like a Reds yeah, game. I way past your bedtime. Why would way I want to? Uh, got, by the I've way, one, I, your Cincinnati Reds are on fire. Your Cincinnati Reds are on fire, Joe. Well, they were, and now they lost three straight. <laughs> and, Senator, well, and, but, and you no, may think this is a political question, out. but I, I have a question for you, which is actually uh, completely unrelated to business. Uh, yeah. I saw that, and I saw, and I, I would uh, commend you for this, uh, that you're calling for a national memorial for the, uh, the, the journalists that were killed uh, last year at the Capitol Gazette. Uh, um, and, uh, but at the same time, uh, you've been very supportive of President Trump. So given that we're having this conversation and given that you seem to think that I'm on the other side of this, would you like to condemn <laughs> the president? <laughs> no, you could condemn the president's comments about being the enemy of the people and his comments for calling The New York Times uh, traitors and, and treasonous. You want you want to comment on that? Yeah. First of all, it's a memorial for fallen journalists, uh, not just those who, who who died five years ago, but for all the hundreds of journalists who have been killed, not just in this country, but in other countries. And it is something I feel strongly about. I, I think, uh, you know, the free and open press plays a critical role in our democracy. So I think it's appropriate for us to have that memorial. By the way, it's all private funded as well, which I like. And uh, we'll have a little press conference about it today and we'll talk more about it. But I think it's appropriate. I think it's appropriate to be somewhere, you know, near them all. Do you think that the president's comments about journalists are appropriate? 
Well, I, I'm, I'm not going to comment about his, his comments. I mean, I, I don't why know not? which ones you're talking about. If you're, if you're going to be as supportive as you are of, of journalists, why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you say something? Well, of course I'm supportive of journalists. I'm, I'm talking so therefore to you, you're not supportive of what the president says about journalists? Well, I don't know which of the many comments you said about journalists you're, you're talking about. I, I think the, one, the ones that he repeats I, daily about them being the enemy of the people. Well, I don't think you guys are the enemy of the people. I think you guys do a good job, and that's why I like coming on your show. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll take that for what it is. Thank you.